All right. Uh, today on State of Mind, uh, if you like what you see, hit the little button right here. You got it? You see that? Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. A little bigger. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, anyway, just hit that button. It's, uh, we're, you know, the more subscribers, the better. We're trying to get to 50,000 and that's the, kind of the goal right now. We're, but, uh, state of mind is, uh, something I'm very proud of as everybody knows, cause I can't stop talking about it. Uh, we have Elizabeth Hendrickson. You may know her from all my children. Young and the restless. General Hospital, um, and we're going to talk about that in a second, but she's been nominated for four Emmys. She should have won all four, but sometimes politics <laughs> kind of get, <laughs> get in the way, you know what I mean? So anyway, how you doing? Hi, it's so good to see you. It's good to see you. It's been a while. I know. Um, Gen let's start with General Hospital. Yeah. Because um, you were you you played a lawyer named Margot. Mm -hmm. I played Sonny Corinto, a mobster. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, I've been with well, Sonny's been with a lot of girls, and no one's good enough for Sonny except Carly and Brenda. But there have been two actresses who I believed had a true shot. That was Kelly Sullivan and you. And sometimes it doesn't work out. I won't get into all that because <laughs> of politics or whatever it is. But I had so much fun with you. And um, it was kind of a shame to me. Do people cry right at the beginning of the show? <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean, I think that you were the best surprise for me at um, GH because, I mean, I don't know if you know the story, but I wasn't, I was like hired the day before that character. Oh, that's started. right. That's they were right. in a pinch. I had another deal that fell through with another soap opera. Yes. They caught wind of it, called me and was like, can you do this? And I said, you're crazy. Uh, and you had to be in court. I had 100 pages in court in one week over the course of maybe two, two and a half days. I'd never played a lawyer. And I said, Frank, <laughs> you know me. You've seen my work. I can't play it. What are you thinking? Wow. And he's like, you can do this. I know you can do this. It was the hardest thing I've ever done in my career really oh learning all that yeah doing yeah, that yeah. all that legal jargon yeah, yeah yeah and learning it and then having also like but you, you know, were so good that first day oh it's so sweet i was as i was i've never been more nervous in my life but um but it was not only it was it was the best challenge it was the hardest thing i've ever done it was so great to push myself into that uncomfortable place and i had always been a fan of general hospital and I, the one thing i said to him was I don't want to come and do this little thing. I'd rather be there, yeah. be there. Yeah. Because what if this just lasts a week and then I ruin my shot? And um, he convinced me <laughs> and I hadn't even read the script. He wouldn't even let me read it. I was like, you gotta at least let me read like the first five pages, man. Like see me, well, let me at least see what I'm getting into. So whatever, I agreed to do it. And then you popped up out of nowhere. I mean, I, that was never, I never expected even to have the chance to be able to work with you. And then when that happened, you know, I've been so fortunate. When I started on My Children, the first day I worked with Susan Lucci, wow. I was at, you know, Young and the Restless. I worked with a bunch of the big wigs there. And then I got you. And I was like, this is so cool. Yeah. Um, and that really, like, even though it was short lived, I wouldn't change a thing because I got to have that experience with you. Well, I mean, you you saying that, like, I wish I stayed longer and we could have had. I think I, I've told you that uh, aside from aside from state of mind, I think I've told you that also on the, on the side and I meant it. 
It was, I just yeah. felt like it could work. It I really, really w it was, yeah. And I know I do that a lot because I have to convince myself. Sure. But in your situation, I really thought, hmm, this is gonna, let's, let's, and yeah. then things happen. Yeah. So you're on y &R and how's that? Yeah. And you, everything cool? <laughs> Everything's good. You all right? Yeah, there? it's really good. I'm having a good time. You know, Christian LeBlanc was here. Of course. Jason Thompson. Yeah. They they were phenomenal, seriously. Yeah. And they made me feel not smart, which... <laughs> They're both very intelligent. Oh, well, the, and, yes. And Christian is... Oh, no, he's I, like on a... He, I have to sometimes... I have to make sure I've had my coffee, a good night's rest, and... He, he's got, there's so, he, he's, he is a magnetic um, force of nature. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I got to get onto his yeah. level. Where, where are we? But um, I love Christian and how talented is he? Oh, he's I mean, he's just like, they're so both talented, talented and they're and both then, overly smart for me. Yeah. But I have street smart. So I can kind of play. Yeah. My only insecurity interviewing people and whatnot is that. I barely graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. So my not, w when I know about stuff, I'm fantastic. Mm -hmm. Acting, right. mental health, mm -hmm. boxing. Yeah. But when it comes to like history. It's <laughs> probably why we got along so well. <laughs> I go, oh no. And both the Jasons, Christian's even more than Jason, but yeah, Jason's yeah. also very yes, smart. Yes, Jason is incredibly. Uh, Intelligent. Listen, enough kissing their ass. So, yeah, enough about them. <laughs> they did great. We're going to do great. So where where did you uh, grow up? I grew up on Long Island. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah right. I was born in New York City, but I was mainly raised on Long Island. Um, and then I went to school in Syracuse, and then I ended up out here. So I've been here for a long time. And how were your parents? How are they? How were they growing oh, up? How were they growing up? I had a I had a pretty difficult uh, upbring upbringing. No. Yeah, I mean, not difficult. I had a very well. Lo I mean, I had come from a very loving family, but it was a very divided family. My mom had me when she was very very young. She was uh, twenty two. She was married when she was twenty or twenty one, and my parents divorced when I was one years old. Um, how was how was um, the divorce? How does that? Well, so I was so young, I I never experienced. I, how old were you? I didn't. I was one when I got divorced. Oh. So I was raised completely separately, and my father um, was an addict, and um, he was in and out of my life um, up until I was in college, is when he got sober. So did you deal with him being an addict in the middle of like? all that or were you not seeing him that much i my mom sheltered me f from it a lot uh -huh. um until i was in high school when things started kind of popping up more um i think it really came to a head when i got drunk for the first time and my mom found me in um in my room on my bed passed out in a pool of vomit really yeah and um and I actually, <laughs> I was sneaky. I, I was a very, I was already acting at that age. At what, and what age? I was, must have been, I was a freshman in, in high school. So I must have been 15. Yeah, yeah. And I lied and I said that my dad didn't call me back. And uh, it was not true. I was having, um, it was funny because I was, I was thinking about, some things that maybe I thought that would pop up because I was thinking about mental illnesses and I realized that I had this anxiety when I was younger. Oh, you did? And I was having, I had anxiety and I had um, insomnia and I was drinking NyQuil to go to sleep. And my mom didn't know this and the NyQuil wasn't working anymore because I was drinking it every night to go to sleep. Oh, and man. I was and I was doing it because like, you know, I was really active in school. I was in theater, I was dancing 40 hours a week. I was I was involved in a lot. I was on dance team. I I was that kid. I was in chorus. I was I was involved in everything. But you know, not sleeping is the worst thing. And I wasn't sleeping and you have school and all these responsibilities and I need to sleep and I was drinking this NyQuil wasn't working anymore. So I went down to my, my mom was actually remarried. She had been remarried for, uh, married, remarried when I was about 10. 
Um, and I went into their liquor cabinet. I think I drank whiskey and something else. And uh, I got... <laughs> I got so drunk. Dang. So in order to get out of it, because I drank out of the, to me, I was like, I drank out of the liquor cabinet. Like, I'm in a lot of trouble. Yeah. So I lied and said my dad didn't call me back. And my mom was like, red flag, going to have an issue, going to be an alcoholic like her father, called a therapist, and I was thrown into therapy right away. Really? Yeah. And I went through about three therapists. I didn't like any of them. And then my mom tried one more shot and she said, I'm going to put you in my therapist. And I went and I came out and I said, when can I go back? And I saw her until I was 24 years old. But that's a good lesson to, you know, a lot of people, they write me and they say, you know, my therapist sucks and this and that. Can I, what do I do? What do I do? You need to go see three or four before you give up because you never know. This one may not work. This one may not work. Just like Elizabeth, then you find the one that works. And then why did it work? What, what, what made you? Well, I don't remember. I think that one of the, I think maybe the first uh, person I spoke to was a male. I don't know if that was a thing for me, but I was going, I was going through things with my father. Like looking back at it, uh, you know, he wasn't around. Even though I used that as an excuse, I remember that year. I hadn't seen my father in a year. Um, I hadn't heard from him in a year. I took a bus to go find him, showed up on his doorstep with like a book that I made of pictures with us, hoping that he would like make some time for me. Um, Son of a bitch. Yeah, I didn't have a good relationship with my stepfather at the time. There were, men were tricky in my relationship, relationships at the time. So I'm not surprised that, I don't know if that man ever could have said the right thing for me, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't really remember the other two. It's a little foggy. I think that this woman just listened to me. I think I just needed to be heard. Yeah. And I just remember she ended up being kind of like an aunt to me. You know, um, I just needed to be able to talk to someone. I'm an only child. I wasn't able to really talk to my mom because, you know, she was dealing with a lot. You know, she was in a new marriage. She has this teenager who's obviously has, you know, yeah. puberty, emotions, all of that. I didn't go to her with personal things. And then I had my stepdad who didn't really know his footing in it. And my dad wasn't there. I had no siblings. My cousin was older. I had no one really to talk to. So I think I just really needed someone. I really needed someone on my side. She was so on my side. And actually, she went to my mom and she said, she's actually fine. She's great. She actually has a really good head on her shoulder. She's very in control of her emotions. She knows what's going on. She she just lied to you. Like she was just trying to get out of this sneaky little lie. And actually my mom came back to me and said, okay, you don't need to continue to see her. And that's when I was like, no, I want to continue to see her. So I stuck with her. I, I really think that that woman, like she really saved me. Oh, that is. She a... really, really saved me. I don't, I don't know which path I would have. So since taken. then, have you had any anxiety or any depression or anything? Not depression. I have anxiety that I've realized that comes up and down comes comes in and out and i've just really actually funny enough i realized just a week ago that i'm having anxiety in a different in a different form when i was younger it used to be um i used to be paralyzed from it i used oh, to get yeah. stuck in my bed and it was like this yeah. noise outside my head yeah. and i couldn't move and i didn't know what it was i had no idea i didn't know until my 20s that that's what i was experiencing none, none of us no did. idea no, right um, now it comes up in the form of like, I get, uh, anxious mm -hmm. and I feel like I need to control things. Mm. So I get like almost speedy <laughs> Yeah. and I start like kind of running circles around people and I really got to slow myself down. You got to breathe. Yeah. Um, it's, I love the way you're, you're expressing yourself, what anxiety is and being physical with it, because the anxiety that it hit me back in the, during the pandemic, I had this anxiety that would not leave. And I was literally, and this has never happened to me, even with nervous breakdowns and, uh, being in the mental institution, I don't remember. I was like this mm. mm -hmm. and I'm like crying 
And I'm like, Paula, what the fuck is this, man? Yeah. What the fuck is this? And I'd lay on the bed. I couldn't, st you know. So it comes in all forms. Yeah. I think for me, I was at the point of you've done it now. You better get professional help. Mm -hmm. Or it's not going to be good. Yeah. Right? And I did. Mm -hmm. But that kind of stuff, what it does is you not only have anxiety, now you have this and your mind's going, I'm done. Yeah. What is this? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've never had it before. Yeah. Uh, it's it, go, it comes in different levels of anxiety, right? Different. Yeah. Different. Uh, you have this anxiety and, and what do you do? Well, funny hmm. enough, I realized that I had this anxiety. I tried uh, I tried microdosing with mushrooms. Oh, really? <laughs> and that's actually where I had the discovery. My cousin was doing it. Uh, my cousin and my best oh, friend were doing it. Man. And um, I've heard a lot of great things. Yeah, I've heard a lot. And I actually ended up not liking it, interestingly enough. I think it was too strong for me. Lisa LaCicero was here. She talked all about. But she talked about ayahuasca. Yeah, she was talking about yeah. ayahuasca. Yeah. So you did what? It, it's microdosing mushrooms okay. in, a, in a capsule. So that's not as harsh no ayahuasca i have done and it <laughs> oh this and, is amazing Can we... and it was awful also awful i went to peru and i did it with shamans and no i threw up for like six hours straight and all i tasted was vodka i remember just being out in a rock and being like <laughs> thinking about my father and then being like Maybe I do have a problem with alcohol, uh, but I don't. I don't. I just, I just unfortunately can't. So you my did liquor. that too. Yeah. So what's um, the other mushroom thing? So the mushroom. So that. So the mushroom is you. You're not supposed to feel it. It's. Um, it's almost like it taking not even like an anxiety pill. It, it. You can take. So there's different dosages. The one that I was doing was for anxiety and to kind of keep yourself. Uh, like if something would come up, normally you'd be like, uh, oh, over something, but then this would just kind of help you just smooth over it, right? You would right. just be like, oh, I'm not going to let that put, right. I'm not going to let that like let me spiral and this is okay. at the end of my day and blah, blah. Okay. You're just going to So in the beginning right of anxiety, it. you would take the mushroom if you're, you're triggered. No, you just take it in the, no, you have to take it uh, every fourth day. You you take it before you get there. So you take it in the and, morning, huh. and it's it's almost like taking an Advil, basically. It's like taking an Advil. But are you are you do you feel like you're gonna have anxiety, or you just take it like tomorrow? I'm gonna go take this mushroom. Yes, it would be it would just be for you to take it, but okay. not to, but you not to feel anything. Okay. My one of my friends actually was taking it to get off her antidepressants, and she wanted to wean herself okay. off. Okay. And there's okay. a way to wean yourself off of it. So I was like, you know what? I want to try it. I am realizing that, you know, I could maybe benefit from this. It was too strong for me. It actually made me feel, I was actually getting, I wasn't, it wasn't even so much anxiety. I felt, and I didn't feel like I was messed up. I didn't feel like I was on drugs, but I was extremely thirsty and I couldn't stop eating, which are the signs of doing drugs. Yeah. And then um, I just didn't feel like myself. I didn't like it. But I did have the revelation of, oh my gosh, I've been having anxiety. I'm really like, I had just like this all of a sudden, like, oh, that's what I've been dealing with in right. the past, you know? So then I tried it again. I was like, you know what? I tried it that first time. I'll try and get it on my fourth day. You do, you know, you go two days, three days off, you go back on. And I, I didn't like it. So then I... I checked back in with my cousin. She was fine on it. My co my friend was fine on it as well. There's different milligrams, and I was on a hundred milligram, and I think you could do fifty. So I think that, and we're there. You know, our bodies are all differently and different. And she's like, you know, you're a tiny petite thing. Maybe you got to be on the fifty. So I haven't tried it again. Um, I'm going to pass it along to someone else who wants to try them, but. You know, it, it's medicinal. It's it's not. You can take more to get a high. That's not what I was doing, but you could if you wanted to. Well, um, I can't because I'm bipolar, and you can't. Yeah. You can't take that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and but, I know where my mind would go. Would yeah, just... but if I go to the 50s, I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> but I'm so 
like a kid in a candy store when I hear about <laughs> mushrooms. I don't know what it is. I had a lot of faith in it. I, you know, um, I, I've heard some really great things. You can also up the dosage a little bit to get more creative space. Um, which I also also sounds kind of cool as an actor, you know, maybe sit down with a script and kind of see if it opens up some things. Wow. Kind of gets you, it gets you out of your head. I understand. It gets it gets you out of your head. But it, it can get you out of your mind. Though. Yeah. Well, what if you lose think, your mind in it? No, but I think you can go to a different place in your mind. I uh, think it's taking you around that hurdle that maybe in order to get there, take it out of yourself, not looking at yourself so much, not caring what people think or caring. Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it right. takes you around that and actually helps you look at it from, I think, a healthier. You yeah. Know, just from a different angle. I get it. Yeah. You know? I mean, so I don't know. Forget ayahuasca, whatever that is. I'm yeah. Ayahuasca is intense. That was scary. Yeah, I was sick the whole time. Some people have incredible experiences. I want to get something off my chest. Yeah. Simone Biles. And I just want to give my two cents. Yeah. Because people don't understand. And I had a conversation. I won't say who because he'll kill me with an actor who's on the other side of it. Okay. And the other side is... She has a lot of girls looking up to her. Mm -hmm. And she, what she's doing is showing that, you know, you quit. Mm -hmm. And I said to the person, and if his name comes out, I'll, we'll, cut, we'll cut that out. <laughs> I said, you don't understand. You, first of all, we don't know what's going on in her mind, right? I had, and the problem is about mental illness, it's invisible. So I had this cut right here. I've, I, I've talked about this on my uh, state of mind when I used to do it in the car. I've had this cut. I went into work and they, people thought I was, had my, like they're going to cut my arm off. Okay. Mm -hmm. People don't understand that when you're at that level, like what I just talked to you about, could I have gone to work like this? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. I mean, I, I think that it's just the opposite. I think that what she did was teach young women yes. to stand up for themselves that no, I am not mentally capable of going into. I mean, I think what she did is the most heroic thing. I think that is worth more than anything. I do else. too, yeah. You know, I, do too. I, and people are talking more. Yeah, of course. About this, of course. Then they will about her win. Of course. And I think it's so incredible. I mean, the strength that it took for her to take herself out of something that she very well easily could have won and added just yes. to her long Look. list of accolades. Right. That was so much more difficult. Yes, and not to mention, if you think that. Because this person didn't know what happened to her. Oh, that's so, a huge piece of... You know, I mean, yeah. if you don't think she's mentally ill, yeah. uh, when you're, you know, molested by a monster, <laughs> yeah. that's going to get you. Yeah. A friend of mine said the same thing at dinner last night, a, a woman actually, and didn't know. And a friend of mine chimed in and said, well, have you heard? And she was like, then you, then you have in reverse to. and was like, oh my gosh. I can't believe I just said that. I had no idea. And um, yeah, I I, it's amazing. It's, it's, I think what she's doing is it's the right move. Completely, 100%. Yeah. Uh, but I guess if you don't understand mental illness or, you, you know, then you, you can think differently. Mm -hmm. But if you really, if you, that's why, that's why we're doing this, right? Yeah. I mean, there were so many times probably that you were working... Yeah, I mean, I mean, right? That you probably wanted to pull yourself. I mean, I can't. I can. Well, let's imagine put it, times let's, that I was at. I mean, how often do we? We can't even sit out when we're sick with a cold. Right. Let me tell you. <laughs> when I had this, it was the biggest deal in the world. Okay, because it did look ugly, but I wanted the scar there, so I didn't do anything to it. <laughs> but I'd go to work with anxiety. As a matter of fact, Donna, who, um, who passed away, she was. It was interesting with Donna because she was, uh, her son had major anxiety, but she didn't believe in it. Mm. And I would have talks with her and she goes, ah, you gotta be strong, anxiety's yeah. nothing. And I remember one day when, during my wife got cancer and, 
and I was in the in the room and I was in the corner and I was crying and she came in there and I remember looking at her and she it was the first time she looked at me like oh that's what it is and uh I still went up I did you know <laughs> it wasn't that easy and I had all this mm -hmm. you know and I was in that state I mm -hmm. still did it mm -hmm. And even, uh, thank God, last year during the Alzheimer's story, I had to finish that story at the tail end of the pandemic and me getting help. Wow. Now, a month before, I wouldn't have been able to go to work. But I did. I was taking my Lexapro, mm. and I finished that story. And you have to understand that during the end of that story, my dad got Alzheimer's. And... You know, and so I had to finish that story with all that and having gone through this anxiety, but you know, it happened. And, uh, and now my dad is, uh, you know, he's in uh, rough shape. How, where, where is he at right now? He's not in great shape. So he's kind of, you know, my dad to me truly was my hero. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was a, when people ask me who my hero was, I, I don't think of actors or anybody. I just think of my dad. I just, so because sweet. he was like the most charismatic, the, the, the funniest, everybody loved him. I remember seeing him at parties with a cigarette, you know, he, and he's just the coolest dude in there dancing. And, and then I'd take him to appearances to do, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm not joking. I'm, I can be funny because I have a script. I, I write it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, my dad would get on stage and just talk. And the fans would just <laughs> laugh this, at this height. Yeah. And I was thinking one time, I was looking at him going, this is like Don Rickles. You know those kind of funny guys who just, th yeah. whatever that comes out? Yeah. Um, but anyway, that's that. But now we're... This interview went, it totally did. <laughs> it's like, it's same with last week. I had one and it's like, uh, I'm already exhausted. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, um, let me see. I, I want to ask you, uh, you're, uh, you're a mother. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a new mother. How is it? It's the best thing in the world. I know it is because I see your Instagram and I don't know if I've seen anybody happier than you. <laughs> I had a really good year of quarantine, I gotta say. I, it was, it actually ended up being my silver lining, um, getting all that time at home with her. Yeah. It was, you know, there were parts of it that were really, really, really difficult having, um, you know, I waited a long time to have kids. Um, I don't normally talk, I had her when I was 40. So Dan, that's that's yeah. Cooler. I wait. I waited a long time, um, and not really by. I just it's, it's just the way it all kind of happened. I was in no rush. I felt very young. I've got time. Then it took. Then it turned out that I wasn't that young, and it was really hard to get pregnant. And oh. I had a couple miscarriages, and it was it was real rough. And um, and then the most magical thing happened. I became pregnant and two weeks before the pandemic happened, Damn. I was due and sorry, two weeks into the pandemic, I was due. I saw you right before I gave birth yeah. when I came in for lunch. Yeah. And, um, you know, I didn't think that I had waited 40 years to go ahead and have a baby all by myself. <laughs> I thought I was going to have family right, and a doula right. and friends and a net and all of this help. And it ended up being the best thing because I, I think that, um, I don't want to say like I'm a follower. I'm not like, but I'm not, I listen to what other people say. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, you got to do this. Oh, you got to do this. Right. Oh, my friend's doing this. Oh, right. this is what you should do. And I very easily will fall into that. And um, I didn't have that. I couldn't, I, I didn't have that hands-on help of being like, oh, this is what's right. going on. I had to do it. You know, my husband and I, I shouldn't say that I did everything but myself. Um, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. And he's an incredible father. Yeah, I can see it. But we, um, 
we just fell in line together as parents and as a family. And I think that um, I really became the mother that I will always, was always meant to be in this time of just me just having that time with her because I had to figure it out. And there was an, all of this chatter in my head and the baby groups and what is this person doing and what is this person doing? And I just got to figure out who she was. And she really led us. Like we listened to her and it was just so peaceful and beautiful. And she's awesome. She's the cutest thing. She's so awesome. Wow. I like really love her as of a person. Of course you, of you know? course. Like I love hanging out with her. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way I am with my grand, you know, kids. They're, They're not too far in age. No, it's it's like you just you just want to like squeeze it. Oh, totally. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just I like know. grab and just <laughs> I, chuck know. It on and... I can just eat those cheeks off. Sometimes she's in the bath and I just like squeeze her butt really hard. I'm like, look at those cheeks. <laughs> um, but they teach us so much, right? Yes, they do. Well, so does my kids. I, I've learned a lot uh watching I've learned a lot of my mistakes watching my kids. Mm -hmm. And that's a tough one. Yeah. What I, this is a very important question. Mm -hmm. You were supposed to be a musketeer. Is that? Oh, yeah. Is oh, that, I did your research. I like A little this. bit. I did a little bit. Um, so were you supposed to be? So I you, was very close to being a musketeer. I was. I was, uh, I was really passionate about acting. And I would listen to Z100, which was the popular radio station in New York. Mm -hmm. And I heard they had a cattle call for actors, singers, and dancers. And I dragged my mom to the city and there were about, I don't know, 600, 700 kids. And I went into a room and I never came out. I came out like seven hours or I kept on coming wow. out. Like I, I kept on coming out and being like, they want me back for the next round. They want me back for the did next round. Did you see Justin Timberlake or Britney Spears? No, but uh, Christina Aguilera. Oh, you did? Yeah, but she didn't make it that year because she was actually too young. But I only know that it was Christina Aguilera because when they did one of those like playbacks of, you know, when, where are they, who they were back right, whatever, right. whatever those things are. And um they had like her audition and I saw myself sitting in the back, like in the row on the side of the room. Really? Sitting there. And I was like, oh my gosh, I auditioned with Christina Aguilera. I didn't, you know, I was like, I was 13 or 12 years old. But, uh, but yeah, I remember I came out and I was like, they want a headshot. And I didn't have headshots. I mean, I had never right. even been to a professional audition. And my mom took out a picture out of her wallet of me with my dog. Oh, and then geez. I just remember that being like attached to my profile, like they had it in like an envelope. And every time I came through, they'd open it. There was a picture of me and my white fluffy dog sitting on my sofa. Um, and then it was my first screen test. I ended up screen testing, but um, I did awful. And I would always, I, even to this day, I, I get all the way up there and then I have the, then the big hit. audition yeah. and I just sink. Um, well, but I got the jacket. I got that. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, I still have it. Well, we're gonna we're gonna end this interview with <laughs> us singing. <laughs> I don't sing anymore, but yeah, we're gonna, gonna sing. To sing. You, you can sing? you can sing with me or not. It's fine. <laughs> Ready? What song? What song are you singing? Are you singing the Musketeer song? <laughs> now it's time to say, say goodbye bye. to all, all our, our company. M I C cereal soon. <laughs> K E Y. Why? Why? Because we, we love, love you. <laughs> M O U S. You went off key, so I didn't see that. I know. That with I'm you. going. To, I, I don't know how to say. <laughs> All right. So that's it. Um, I want to say before we really go is Jesus, man. Th this has been. Uh, I don't know what I expected. Elizabeth just opened up about so many things, so many things are gonna help so many people, uh, about anxiety especially, and people love talking about anxiety. And, um, and she did it in a very charming way. And I just appreciate this interview a lot. So good to see you. All right, thank you, baby.